good morning, folks. I'm very excited to be here. My name is uh, Mora. I'm a systems hardware engineer at Google. And I'm also proud of the fact that I'm on the board of directors for the Open Power Foundation. This year, I'm the treasurer. So it's been two years since we had a summit, and uh, I've got a lot of exciting things to talk about. Um, so with that, let's get started. So today, I want to cover two key topics. The first is technology trends and, uh, and growth trends and the implication for supply demand gap. And the second part is that's a challenge and how open power systems can help us address that challenge through core and system innovations. So uh, Brad stole my thunder earlier. Uh, this is a beautiful chart from a textbook by Patterson and Hennessy, uh, Computer Architecture Quantitative Approach. What's nice about this chart is that it shows the different phases, key phases of technology trends. So the green era was the era of Denard scaling, so transistor shrink shrinking, but power density remaining the same. And you saw performance improvements of 52% year over, over year, amazing. But that ended about 15 years ago. Then we went into a phase of multi-core, multi-threaded platform systems along the lines of uh, Amdahl's law. And now, in this recent phase, uh, since I last spoke, in fact, we see a era of slower scaling in technology trends. I think this is appropriately read. This is a challenging time for us in terms of technology trends. Uh, now on to uh, growth trends. So the last time I spoke at the summit two years ago, I mentioned three applications where we had over 1 billion users. That is Gmail, YouTube, and Search. And uh, we've had an exciting ride at Google. Now we can add four, at least four more applications to that list. That is uh, Android, Maps, Chrome, and Play. So seven applications, phenomenally growing demand. Not, more, not only is our demand growing significantly, the shape of our demand is changing. And just to double click on uh, one technology area, and that is our own Google's web search. This chart shows the evolution of features in uh, for web search at Google. And although the chart is, ends in 2013, I think uh, some of you may be familiar with the fact that we're continuing to invest in having a more intuitive experience for our users, for users of web search. And that's an investment along the lines of uh, uh, image search and speech recognition, video search. And we've declared ourselves to be an AI-first company. So with uh, technology trends slow down, growing demand, and changing demand, uh, we have a pretty challenging situation. We have what we call a supply-demand gap, which means the supply on the technology side is not keeping up with this phenomenal demand growth that we have. And that makes it hard for us to balance that equation that we call performance per TCO dollar, so performance per total cost of ownership. This problem is not unique to Google. This is an industry-wide problem. So how do we go about addressing this challenge? And for us, uh, one of the ways that we do that is to rely on open ecosystems. So we've been very busy in the space of open ecosystems in the last couple of years. Uh, we've collaborated with Rackspace, IBM, and through the Open Power Foundation, developed our next generation open power system that is called Zeus. Uh, we released the hardware design for that Zeus platform through the Open Compute project. We've also done other project activities in the open ecosystem space. So TensorFlow has been enabled on the Power8 platform. And I feel for us, uh, the fact that an, an aspect of the Open Power Foundation became so significant that it formed a foundation of its own, which is uh, Open Capi, is a sign of the growth of the Open Power Foundation and continuing the success 
of that platform. So now, having described our work in uh, open ecosystems, I want to talk about three technology areas in which open power systems can excel and can help us with the challenge of technology trends. So earlier this year, uh, my colleagues presented a paper at HPCA, which is a High Performance Computer Architecture Symposium. And the focus of that paper was Google's web search. Uh, Google's web search is our our IP, our super secret intellectual property, so not much known is, about, is known about how that workload behaves on general computer architectures. Uh, when we did this study, uh, we gained some pretty key insights. And the first insight was that, as, that standard industry benchmarks like spec interrate don't adequately affect the behavior of Google's web search on processors. And then with regard to technology insights, on the first chart on the left, you can see a plot of queries per second, which is a key web search metric against uh, core count. And we found that uh, performance queries per second scale linearly with core count. And then on the right, we looked at platforms with different thread count per core. Um, on the left-hand side, actually, is an Intel platform. On the right is an IBM platform. And we found that when you right-size the architecture, in particular, having the appropriately sized L2 cache, the performance of web search scales really nicely with thread count. So for web search, which consumes a significant amount of compute resources at Google, uh, more threads and more cores is a good thing. In the second chart, uh, we talk about a different type of workload. Uh, so we've been developing our own machine learning hardware accelerator. We call this the tensor processing unit. In the picture on the left, we show a uh, standard configuration. So this is a PCIe attached tensor processing unit accelerator. And although we have this accelerator, we still need general purpose host compute to provide supporting tasks, uh, tasks to support and make this uh, accelerator successful in the ecosystem. And what we found for this use case, uh, there's, in this particular example, we looked at a work effort that is called a parameter server. And the role of the parameter server is to manage gradients for machine learning models. And what we found was that when you dedicated the host CPU in the chart on the right, you can see that you can accomplish some pretty good performance latency. But when we introduced other tasks to that same processing, processing unit, the host processor, the latency performance of this particular type of model was significantly impacted. And so what that means is you've built this beautiful accelerator. You invested uh, all of this effort, time, and resources to make that a, an amazing hardware platform. But if the host processor can't keep up with that, as my colleague said, did you really have an accelerator? Did you really accelerate the fleet? And what we found was that the first limiting factor was DRAM bandwidth. So there was contention on the DRAM interface. So in this case, more memory bandwidth is what we need in a platform. And in the third example that I want to talk about, today we have DRAM technology and we have NAN technology. And in between, we describe the opportunity for what we call far memory. So the characteristics of DRAM are super low latency, high bandwidth, uh, and, and compare that to NAND, which has significantly higher latency, 1,000x, much lower bandwidth. But on the other hand, NAND is much cheaper than DRAM. So we feel that there is a pretty big gap between NAND and DRAM and an opportunity to make our platforms much more performant and impactful. And the opportunity lies in finding a memory technology that sits in between these two. 
And we want to have a technology solution that's platform and vendor agnostic, meaning that multiple vendors can have NVM technology set on a, a memory bus or IO, high I.O. interface. And today, the closest vendor agnostic uh, products that exist in the market are Samsung's ZSSD and Intel's Optane. These are PCIe Gen 3 attached devices. And so they're, although they're pretty good and have something like 10 microsecond latency average, there's still significant room and a significant gap to get to where DRAM is. Uh, so we feel that OpenCAPI presents an amazing opportunity for NVM Attach. And to have a technology that's lower cost than DRAM, but still delivers much of the performance characteristics. And so with that, uh, I'll move on to talk about what we are doing with open power platforms at Google. So when we spoke at the summit two years ago, we talked about the fact that we were committed to developing a Power9 system platform. We named that project Zeus. And just a quick recap on what Zeus is. So Zeus is a dual socket Lagrange CPU platform, uh, amazing memory bandwidth, so eight DDR4 ch channels per processor, amazing I.O. bandwidth, and what we appreciate is industry-leading PCIe Gen 4, so first processor to market with PCIe Gen 4. Along with that is the open copy interface, 16 lanes, at, or 32 lanes, 25 gigabits per second each, 16 lanes per processor. This platform is 48 volts open rack compatible and built on open power uh, boot firmware, so open software, and we leverage open BNC to do the system software management. And as Hugh mentioned earlier, we feel that Open Power Foundation is pretty unique in enabling both open hardware and the open software that you need to make this platform work for you. Um, and so if you, so let me get cut to the chase and talk about the status of Zeus at Google. So we're pretty excited at the progress that we have made with this platform. Uh, we've deployed Zeus in Google's data center, and this background photo is actually a photograph of machines in the data center that one of my friends, a tech, hardware ops technician, took a photograph of. So, we're at the phase for the, this Zeus platform where we're ready to scale up the number of applications and we're ready to scale up the machine count. So what that means, and as to quote my VP, we're declaring this Zeus platform to be Google strong. And so... And so we've talked about how you can build this platform design from ground up using open hardware and open software. If, if you want to get a jump start, uh, do join the Rackspace Tech Talk at 1 o'clock today, where they'll talk about how they've qualified different technologies, like from an accelerator from Nalatech, NVIDIA's uh, GPU, Mellanox's NIC interface, and many other technologies. So you can get going quickly on the Zeus platform. Or, and so with that, I invite you to uh, join us. The Power9 Open Power Systems platform is here. Uh, join us in innovating and uh, rethinking the data center. Thank you.